और गाइस बिफोर वी मूव ऑन इफ यू वांट टू प्रैक्टिस दिस क्वेश्चंस यूजिंग आर्टिफिशियल इंटेलिजेंस एंड सी व्हाट मिस्टेक्स यू आर मेकिंग व्हाट स्कोर यू आर लाइक टू डू गेट इन द टेस्ट आई हैव गॉट अ ग्रेट न्यूज़ फॉर यू यू कैन प्रैक्टिस ऑल दिस क्वेश्चंस विद एआई ऑन आवर ऐप LAPT एग्जाम प्रैक्टिस ऐप व्हिच इज अवेलेबल ऑन iOS एंड Android एज वेल प्लस इफ यू वांट टू टेक अ फुल स्कोर्ड मॉक टेस्ट वन फ्री फुल स्कोर मॉक टेस्ट इज अवेलेबल इन द ऐप और यू कैन रजिस्टर ऑन लैंग्वेज अकेडमी डॉट कॉम डॉट ए यू द स्कोर कार्ड यू विल गेट विद द मॉक टेस्ट विल बी एज सिमिलर एज वट यू विल गेट इन द एक्चुअल टेस्ट एंड विच विल मेक इट वेरी क्लियर वट स्कोर यू आर लाइक यू टू गेट आई हाईली रिकमेंड ईच एंड एवरी वन ऑफ यू टू टेक दैट मॉक टेस्ट see what mistakes you are making how to improve and what are the things you need to work on lastly we have got our branches in australia and in india and we do provide online classes if you need any help do contact us on the numbers below now you can continue with the video Good evening ma'am. How can I help you? Good evening. Can you please show me the food menu card? Yes ma'am. Are you veg or non-veg? Non-veg. Here is your menu ma'am. Please take a look and tell me what you would like to have. How is your grilled chicken? Is that okay? Yes ma'am. We have really good quality chicken and we are quite famous here for grilled chicken. I am sure you will love it. Should I go for it ma'am? Okay. Half grilled chicken with two buttered bread.
3D bioprinting is the process of 3D printing a biological structure using bioinks consisting of cells and other biological materials. This innovation can be used in the medical field for different procedures, especially for organ transplants. As of now, transplant patients run the risk of organ rejection, an instance where the body recognizes a donor organ as foreign body and enlists the immune system to treat it as such. Since the donor organ is necessary to the patient, other measures need to be taken to try to stop the immune system from fighting against it. The use of bioinks and specialization of 3D bioprinters can result in less rigorous medical therapies for these patients. Australia and New Zealand have many common links. Both countries were recently settled by Europeans, are predominantly English-speaking and in that sense, share a common cultural heritage. Although in close proximity to one another, both countries are geographically isolated and have small populations by world standards, have similar histories and enjoy close relations on many fronts. In terms of population characteristics, Australia and New Zealand have much in common. Both countries have minority indigenous populations, and during the latter half of the 20th century have seen a steady stream of migrants from a variety of regions throughout the world. The Edo Tokyo Tate Mono N is an open-air architectural museum, but could be better thought of as a park. Thirty buildings from the 19th and early 20th centuries from all around Tokyo were restored and relocated to the space, where they can be explored by future generations to come. The buildings are a collection of houses and businesses, shops, and bathhouses, all of which would have been present on a typical middle-class street from Itakura to Showera, Tokyo. The west section is residential, with traditional thatched roof bungalows of the 19th century. Meiji-era houses are also on view, constructed in a more western style after Japan opened its borders in 1868.
Clownfish became famous thanks to the movie Finding Nemo. In real life, their social hierarchy is simple, larger fish dominate their smaller counterparts. Now we know that to reinforce this social structure, the fish communicate with aggressive and submissive audio signals. The new info is in the journal PLOS 1. Researchers recorded clownfish calls, capturing this noise as one chased a smaller fish. These popping sounds function as an aggression signal. When a clownfish has been chased and wishes to submit, it shakes its head in a submissive gesture and produces clicking noises like these. The researchers compared the aggressive and submissive calls and found that the sound pulses in a submissive signal were shorter and more high-pitched. Hello, Jason. How are you? It's been a long time since we last met. Oh. Hi, Sarah. I have got a new job now and is going great. How about you? Not too bad. How often do you eat at this cafe? This is my first time my friends kept telling me the food was great, so tonight I decided to try it. What have you been up to? I have been so busy with my new job that I have not had the time to do much else, but otherwise, me and the family are all fine. Well, I hope you and your family have a lovely meal. Yes, you too. If you are inspired to take concrete action for global peace and development, take a look at the United Nations Volunteers UNVIT, program. Every year, up to 8,000 qualified and experienced women and men of some 160 different nationalities volunteer at least six months of their lives to help others. These UN volunteers work in some 130 countries promoting peace, responding to disasters empowering communities and helping to build sustainable livelihoods and lasting development. UN volunteers come from dozens of professional backgrounds but all of them are catalysts of positive change. They are encouraged to be creative and entrepreneurial, and foster volunteerism for peace and development both within and beyond their assignments.
One of the questions I guessed a lot is how do we get good local government, good bureaucracy, and how do we see these positive changes come forward? And it's interesting because a lot of the time we pay attention to the pioneers, the people coming with new ideas or sometimes we pay attention to the big bosses, the politicians, or the big civil servants, but it seems to me the really important people in seeing kind of widespread change are people like Morak. Morak is a manager for a council called North Funnish Council, it's in Scotland. And what Morak has done for many years now is constantly work away with her colleagues to figure out how do we keep making the system better. The primary obstacle to good thinking is not a cramped desk or an uninteresting horizon. It is, first and foremost, anxiety. Often the most profound thoughts we need to grapple with have a potentially disturbing character. As these potential implications start to come vaguely into view, our inner sensor, motivated by a desire for calm rather than growth, gets alarmed. A vigilant part of the self gets agitated, it distracts us, it makes us feel tired or gives us a strong need to go online. Skillfully, it confuses and muddles our train of thought. It blocks the progress we were starting to make towards ideas that, though important and interesting also, presented marked threats to short-term inner peace. But lowering your blood sugar after a meal is just about the only benefit of drinking apple cider vinegar. Research does suggest that acetic acid can slow down the accumulation of body fat and prevent metabolic disorders in mice and rats. But there's little evidence that it has the same effect on humans. 
In one weight loss experiment, 30 volunteers drank two tablespoons of either apple cider vinegar, malt vinegar, or a placebo drink, twice a day, for two months straight, and none of them lost weight. In an older study with a similar design, participants did lose weight, but only about a third of a pound each week, which McDonald's says isn't much. But if not for weight loss, what about using cider vinegar to whiten your teeth? I caution people against that. That's because cider vinegar is an acid. How are you Nisha? I am good. What about you? I am good too. But there is a thing that is bothering for a couple of days. What is that? Poverty in Bangladesh. I have read newspaper reports and saw some reports on television and I learned that Bangladesh has an extreme problem with poverty. Yeah, I heard about that too. Do you know about the data or exactly number? According to some statistic around 5% of people are living below the line of poverty in this country. In a population of 160 million, 5% is a huge number. We make our countertops with quartz, our clothes with cotton, our windows with glass, and our streets with asphalt, because water can't dissolve these materials. They're made mostly of molecules with no charged parts. It would be silly to build, say, windows with something that can dissolve in water, like sugar unless you're going to eat them. And lots of the substances that water does dissolve, like washable markers, are things we engineered so that they can be washed away. We've also engineered versions that aren't dissolvable in water for when we don't want them to be washed away, by making sure water dissolves what we want it to and only what we want it to. We've been able to adapt a life to a world in which water dissolves so much stuff.
In 2012, after reviewing the evidence, the American Medical Association released a major statement, Night light can disrupt your sleep cycle. However, for whatever reason, not many people have been since informed about it. So here is the basics of what you need to know. When you're exposed to a significant amount of light, specifically of the blue wavelengths, your body suppresses melatonin production to make you feel more awake. Normally this evolutionary design works pretty well. With the coming of night and day, our melatonin levels waxes and wanes, giving us a circadian rhythm. However, since the invention of artificial lights, we're being exposed to more and more light at night time and these effects can be pretty big. All of my research and that I conducted with my 60-plus graduate students was motivated by their need to learn so that we can teach. Of course, in some inventions happened along the way, but I've always considered the end the result. And I always consider that this invention to be byproduct, byproducts of the learning process. The end product for me was always better understanding or when one really succeeded in unifying theory that can help us in teaching the subject. I've also looked at teaching as a vehicle to try new ideas of new ways to doing things on an intelligent group of learners. That is as the vehicle for the teaching research results. And in my experience, this kind of teaching is the most stimulated and motivating to students. Hello. My name is David. It's nice to meet you. Hi. I'm Jenny. It's my pleasure to meet you. I am sorry. What was your name again? Jenny. So Jenny, what do you do for a living? I work at the local school teaching English. What do you for a living? I am also an English teacher, but I'm currently out of work. Sorry to hear that. It has been really nice talking to you. Yes. It was a great pleasure meeting you.
In today's globally integrated economy, businesses are forced to seek out the cheapest and best resources as far as possible. Global supply chains provide businesses with the opportunity to take advantage of low-cost goods and services in foreign locations, leading to reduced operating costs. However, depending on outsourcing increases the number of risk factors beyond the business's control. For example, a tsunami in Japan disrupted an auto assembly plant in Ohio when essential parts couldn't be delivered. And severe flooding in Thailand delayed the manufacture of computers for the U.S. market when hard drives failed to arrive. Ethical considerations may also play a role, as even when a firm ensures that contracted factory owners provide fair wages and safe working conditions, abuses still occur. And it is difficult to assign responsibility. One of the most notable benefits of globalization is that it has enabled countries with limited resources to gain access to goods and knowledge that can help to improve their standards of living. For instance, trade treaties such as the USMCA and the EU have played a key role in lowering or abolishing tariffs that restrict the flow of products across borders. As a result, Countries with rare resources or specific skills have been able to focus on their particular strengths and sell their goods to a global market. This has helped to improve the economic conditions of many nations, and according to The Economist magazine, freer trade policies have lifted 1 billion people out of poverty. However, there are also some downsides to globalization. For instance, Outsourcing has enabled businesses to exploit people as sources of cheap labor required to work under substandard conditions. The need for political cooperation at the global level has led to the creation of international cooperative bodies such as the United Nations and the World Trade Organization. These organizations exist because it is impossible for any country to remain isolated from events happening around the world. People's ideas and expectations are shaped by what they see happening around them. And the rapid flow of information to most areas of the world means that people are very aware of events taking place around the globe virtually as they happen. While some nations such as North Korea choose to try to isolate themselves from the rest of the world, others try to control the flow of information within their borders. However, technology makes it very difficult to control access to information, 
and depending on how it is used, technology can both reduce and increase political tensions and military conflicts. In most organizations, there are both formal and informal information systems. Formal communication systems refer to the methods used to convey information necessary for conducting the business of the organization. These communications conform to rules and regulations prescribed by the profession or law, such as formal reporting procedures for tracking injuries in the workplace. The information flows within the chain of command or within task responsibilities. For instance, managers may require regular progress reports, and scheduled meetings may be held to exchange information on the status of a project. Human resources may also arrange seminars to convey new policies and procedures. The formal communication system ensures that necessary information flows through the organization, and that dissemination of this information is controlled. Feedback is a message sent in the opposite direction, from the receiver to the sender. However, many problems can occur during feedback, especially when it is not important or wanted. Much of the information that is communicated is intended to keep people informed, and acknowledgement or response is not expected. For instance, when management sent the notice about Matthias's appointment, it did not expect every employee to respond. However, sometimes feedback is important to ensure that both the sender and receiver have the same information and interpret it the same way. In such cases, the initial sender must be sure to understand the feedback provided by the receiver. Ask questions to clarify any misinterpretation, and respond to any questions. Being a good listener is the last step in good communication.
solar panels have been a popular choice for generating electricity from sunlight. However, their use in urban areas, especially neighborhoods with tall buildings or shops, has been limited due to their size and shape. This has posed a challenge for researchers looking to make solar panels more accessible to people living in cities. But with recent advancements, a breakthrough has been made in the form of transparent solar panels. These panels have been designed to serve as power-generating windows in homes. They are made up of solar cells that absorb radiation from the sun to produce electricity. However, unlike traditional solar panels, they can allow visible light to pass through them while still selectively absorbing invisible solar radiation, such as infrared and UV lights. This is made possible through the use of transparent luminescent solar concentrators. Fiji, an archipelago in the South Pacific, is among the many countries that are facing the impact of the climate crisis. With over 300 islands and a population of under 1 million people, the majority of its inhabitants live near the coastline. This makes the country highly susceptible to the adverse effects of climate change, such as sea level rise, flooding, and extreme weather events. In order to adapt to these changes, various options are being explored, such as reclaiming surrounding areas, dredging riverbeds, and raising houses on stilts. Relocation is seen as a last resort and can only occur after all alternative measures have been considered and ruled out in consultation with the community. However, even when all parties agree to the relocation, Access to funding can still be a limiting factor. Male chicks have long been at a disadvantage in the poultry industry, as they are unable to lay eggs and tend to have less meat than their female counterparts. This means that they are viewed as a liability by farmers, who often resort to gassing as a means of disposing of them. The widespread culling of male chicks is not only tragic but also requires significant resources from farmers who must expend time and effort sorting males from females immediately after they hatch. However, a groundbreaking development in animal welfare could potentially revolutionize the poultry industry and put an end to the mass culling of an estimated 7 billion male chicks each year. Israeli researchers have developed gene-edited hens that lay eggs that only hatch female chicks potentially eliminating the need to cull male chicks entirely.
The impact of cigarette litter goes far beyond merely being an eyesore in public spaces. The ingestion of cigarette butts by wildlife can lead to severe injury or death, and the chemicals present in these discarded items can leach into soil and water, posing a risk to both environmental and human health. Recently, a new law has come into effect that mandates tobacco companies to pay for the cleanup of millions of cigarette butts that have been littered in public areas. This new law is part of a larger environmental initiative aimed at reducing the amount of single-use plastic pollution by prohibiting the use of items such as cutlery, plates, straws, polystyrene cups, and cotton buds. Although Spain's new law is a step in the right direction, it will be important to closely monitor its implementation and effectiveness. Businesses can benefit significantly from investing in employee skills and strengths. Building and developing employee skills and understanding strengthens the business on a professional level. Companies often fund employees' education if they want to pursue advanced degrees or certifications in their field. Training seminars and programs can also be useful tools for professional development. However, investing in personal development can also benefit the organization. Programs that help develop leadership skills or seminars that train employees in managing interpersonal communication skills have obvious practical value in most organizational settings. While it may not seem directly related to business goals, personal development can contribute to a positive work culture, employee engagement, and ultimately the organization's success. Our understanding of numerical concepts extends beyond language and is not limited to humans alone. Even non-human animals can mentally represent the number of objects in a collection. Researchers have been gathering evidence to support this claim and have identified various ways in which non-human animals use numerical abilities for survival. The ability to recognize and understand numbers can provide an evolutionary advantage. For instance, bees can count dots one at a time while crawling over them, which helps them identify flowers by the number of petals. In turn, this aids them in collecting food efficiently. Small fish join the largest shoal to reduce the risk of predation. By recognizing numbers, 
they can identify the largest shoal and increase their chances of survival. Numerical abilities are also crucial for navigation. The topic of low-calorie sweeteners is one that has been surrounded by controversy. While some studies have praised their beneficial effects on health and weight loss, others have linked them to serious health conditions such as high blood pressure and an increased risk of type 2 diabetes. Recently, a large study of French adults suggested that consuming sweeteners could lead to an increased risk of heart disease. Alison Silvitsky, an associate professor at George Washington University, is working to unravel the science behind this contentious topic. Her research is focused on determining whether artificial sweeteners can give us the sweet taste we crave while helping us maintain a healthy weight and prevent chronic disease, or if they should be consumed with caution. Two decades ago, Kashmiri houseboat owners rubbed their hands every spring at the prospect of the annual influx of tourists. From May to October, the hyacinth choked waters of Dal Lake saw flotillas of vividly painted shikaras carrying Indian families, boho westerners, young travelers, and wide eyed Japanese. Carpet sellers honed their skills as did purveyors of anything remotely embroidered while the houseboats initiated by the British Raj provided unusual accommodation. Then, in 1989, separatist and Islamist militancy attacked and everything changed. Hindus and countless Kashmiri business people bolted, at least 35,000 people were killed in a decade, the lake stagnated, and the houseboats rotted.
Nutrition research is often challenging because it relies heavily on observational studies that are subject to people's own reports of what they eat and when they eat it, which can be unreliable. To gain a clearer understanding of how breakfast consumption affects weight loss, Alexander Johnstone at the University of Aberdeen in the UK and her colleagues conducted a study involving 30 overweight or obese adults with no underlying health conditions. By the end of the study, the researchers found that there was little difference in how much weight participants lost when they ate more in the morning or the evening. This suggests that calories are metabolized the same way regardless of when they are consumed. The six programs represented here report that word of mouth is by far their most effective recruitment tool, particularly because it typically yields candidates who are similar to previously successful candidates. Moreover, satisfied candidates and school systems are likely to spread the word without any special effort on the part of their program. Other, less personal advertising approaches, such as radio and television spots and local newspaper advertisements, have also proven fruitful. Especially for newer programs. New York uses a print advertising campaign to inspire dissatisfied professionals to become teachers. Subway posters send provocative messages to burned out or disillusioned professionals. By 1984, the Internet had expanded to encompass 1,000 host computers, with the National Science Foundation leading the charge in establishing connections to this growing network. Other governmental, nonprofit, and educational institutions soon followed suit. Initial efforts to organize this rapidly expanding network were rudimentary, including the creation of Archie, a list of FTP information by Peter Deutsch at McGill University in Montreal. However, the most groundbreaking innovation on the Internet was still on the horizon, incubating in an MIT laboratory in Cambridge, Massachusetts. The World Wide Web, often confused with the Internet itself, is just one facet of the Internet, alongside email, video conferencing, and streaming audio channels.
research has consistently demonstrated that a positive mindset significantly enhances performance across various domains, including productivity, creativity, and engagement. However, the relationship between happiness and performance is often misunderstood. Many individuals believe that success precedes happiness, thinking, I will be happy once I receive a promotion, or I will feel great once I achieve my sales target. Yet, because success is a moving target, with new goals constantly emerging, the happiness derived from success is fleeting. In fact, the inverse is true. Those who cultivate a positive mindset tend to perform better when faced with challenges. This phenomenon is known as the happiness advantage, where every aspect of business performance improves when individuals maintain a positive outlook. Sometimes, it is even challenging to believe that a student was present in the classroom, given their performance. In reality, predicting what students will learn from a specific sequence of classroom activities is highly uncertain. Therefore, assessment serves as the crucial link between teaching and learning. Even if all students began at the same starting point, an improbable scenario, their understanding of the subject matter would diverge quickly. This underscores the necessity of assessment, as it allows educators to gauge whether classroom activities have achieved the desired learning outcomes. While assessment serves other purposes in education, it remains the primary means of understanding and facilitating student progress. They hunted large herbivores while also incorporating berries, leaves, roots, wild fruits, and mushrooms into their diet. Their hunting practices were indiscriminate, as the abundant wildlife rendered it unnecessary to spare pregnant females or the young. Evidence from the Enlin Cave, for instance, revealed numerous bones of reindeer and bison fetuses. Interestingly, Upper Paleolithic people did not primarily inhabit deep caves, but rather preferred locations at the base of cliffs, especially those with overhangs for shelter. On plains and in valleys, they utilized tents made from animal hides, and occasionally, on the vast Russian plains, 
they constructed huts using massive bones and tusks obtained from mammoth skeletons. In a democratic nation, the right to choose whether to participate in elections should be upheld. It is perplexing that, despite years of closely following the United States' political path, Australians do not possess this privilege. The imposition of fines for abstaining from voting evokes the age-old saying, you can lead a horse to water, but you cannot make him drink. These fines are not for abstaining from voting itself, but for failing to have your name checked off a list. Forcing individuals to make a choice often results in them opting for the quickest, easiest decision rather than the most informed one. A well-informed electorate is essential for the success of compulsory voting. However, the harsh reality is that information about candidates is often scarce, leaving voters with limited options. By cultivating legumes like green beans, soybeans, lentils, and peas, gardeners have the opportunity to both provide sustenance for their families and enhance the quality of the soil. Leguminous plants possess the unique ability to generate their own nitrogen, a crucial nutrient essential for the growth of all plants. This nitrogen is synthesized within specialized nodules that form on the roots of legumes and house rhizobium bacteria. These bacteria perform the remarkable task of converting atmospheric nitrogen into a form readily accessible to plants. When legumes are uprooted in the autumn, the surplus nitrogen stored in these nodules remains in the soil. This surplus organic nitrogen becomes a valuable resource for other plants in the subsequent growing season.
The mutually beneficial relationship between cows and grass is a natural marvel often underestimated, yet it holds the key to comprehending various aspects of modern meat production. Grasses, which have evolved to withstand ruminant grazing, owe their expanded habitat to cows. These animals prevent trees and shrubs from encroaching on grasslands and displace seeds while fertilizing the soil with their manure. In exchange for these services, grasses provide ruminants, including cows, with a bountiful and exclusive source of nutrition. These animals possess a unique ability to convert indigestible grass, which is beyond the capabilities of single-stomached creatures like humans, into high-quality protein. In discussions about educational quality and equity in Australia, it often appears that achieving both simultaneously is an insurmountable challenge. Curriculum reforms aimed at enhancing equity frequently fail because they expand the range or diversity of educational offerings, exacerbating disparities in quality. Furthermore, these quality variations frequently mirror differences in students' social backgrounds since disadvantaged students are more likely to choose these new offerings that do not serve them well. Evidence from New South Wales serves as an illustration of this phenomenon. The global consensus among OECD and other countries on the need to improve education quality is strong as they strive to bolster their knowledge economies. Understanding the probability of injuries within a specific time frame significantly impacts recruitment decisions, as teams naturally prefer players who are expected to stay injury-free for longer durations. Industry executives have traditionally relied on their experience-based intuition regarding injury factors such as time spent on the field. While these predictions sometimes prove accurate, more often than not, they do not. The key difference now is that AI can support certain conventional wisdom, such as the higher susceptibility to injury for NFL wide receivers over the age of 30, while also providing precise estimates of injury likelihood or reduced performance and their implications for player availability and associated costs.
Surprisingly, Americans now allocate more of their food budget to restaurants than grocery stores, yet restaurant fare typically contains even less fiber compared to homemade meals. A significant issue lies in the absence of unprocessed fruits and vegetables on restaurant menus. An illuminating 2007 study involving interviews with 41 restaurant executives revealed that they perceived fruits and vegetables as costly to prominently feature, with 61% prioritizing profits in menu selections. Moreover, they resisted labeling certain items as healthier choices, fearing it would harm their business. Consequently, people prefer dining out and indulging in fiber-free comfort foods, a potentially perilous dietary path. When the Rosetta Stone was unearthed in 1799, its engraved characters were swiftly duplicated. Printer's ink was applied to the stone surface, with white paper subsequently pressed onto it. Upon removal of the paper, an exact reversed copy of the text emerged. Since then, numerous copies or facsimiles have been produced using various materials. Over time, the stone accumulated layers of residue from these copying endeavors, despite attempts to clean it. When exhibited as the centerpiece of the Cracking Codes exhibition at the British Museum in 1999, the Rosetta Stone appeared black with white lettering. However, the opportunity for investigation and cleaning arose, allowing for the removal of everything except the original ancient material. Innovations originating in a particular geographic region or business unit, such as new customer-centric products, HR policies to attract and retain talent, or production processes driving efficiency gains, frequently remain confined within those entities rather than being disseminated throughout the entire organization. Let's consider the experience of a global consumer packaged goods company and three of its regional business units. Inisite provided advisory services to the company. Region 1 developed a new brand targeted at health-conscious younger consumers. Region 2 optimized its production processes for increased profitability. And Region 3 created sustainability-focused business models.
The concept of blue oceans refers to industries that do not currently exist the unexplored market space free from competition. In blue oceans, demand is generated rather than competed for, offering abundant opportunities for rapid and profitable growth. Two approaches can lead to the creation of blue oceans. In some cases, companies can give birth to entirely new industries, as exemplified by eBay in the online auction sector. However, more commonly, a blue ocean emerges within a red ocean when a company redefines the boundaries of an existing industry. Cirque du Soleil's story exemplifies this phenomenon. By breaking the traditional barriers between the circus and theater, Cirque forged a new and lucrative blue ocean within the circus industry's red ocean. The extensive clearing of trees and woodlands remains a substantial issue, contributing not only to emissions but also to various adverse environmental consequences, particularly affecting water systems. The environmental problems afflicting Blue Mountains river systems, estuary areas, coastal lakes, and lagoons are grave, with eutrophication being a notable concern. Australia's rate of native vegetation clearance is relatively high on a global scale. In fact, it is estimated that in 1990, the rate of clearing native vegetation in Australia surpassed more than half of that in the Brazilian Amazon. This rapid clearance results in a lack of vegetation, leading to the potential extinction of numerous herbivores. Australian flora and fauna have adapted to specific natural fire regimes, characterized by factors such as fire intensity, frequency, season, size, and type. The Great Barrier Reef, renowned as the largest coral reef on Earth, is comprised of 2,900 smaller reefs that connect together, spanning over 2,600 kilometers and encompassing more than 850 islands. Positioned in the Coral Sea off the coast of Queensland and NSW, this impressive reef is so immense that it can be observed from outer space, making it the largest structure formed by living organisms. Composed of billions of tiny coral polyps, the Great Barrier Reef hosts an extraordinary range of life and earned recognition as a World Heritage Site in 1981, also being acclaimed as one of the seven natural wonders of the world. It holds such significance in Queensland that it has been designated as a state icon by the Queensland National Tourist Department. The Great Barrier Reef Marine Park safeguards a substantial portion of the reef, 
curtailing the impact of human activities like fishing and tourism. Water plays a central role in promoting sustainable development. It not only encompasses water resources themselves but also the various services they provide, which are crucial for reducing poverty, fostering economic growth, and ensuring environmental sustainability. Water contributes to enhancing social well-being and inclusive growth, affecting the lives of billions of people, from ensuring food and energy security to promoting human and environmental health. In an attainable future characterized by sustainability, water and related resources are effectively managed to support human well-being and maintain the integrity of ecosystems within a strong economy. The availability of sufficient and safe water is ensured to meet the basic needs of every individual, with reliable and affordable water supply and sanitation services that facilitate healthy lifestyles and behaviors. This means that developers and homebuyers can now obtain insurance and mortgages for straw homes and buildings. The innovative straw walls in these new houses provide twice the insulation required by current UK building regulations. Based on monitoring a straw bale residential development in Leeds, fuel bill reductions of up to 90% are expected. The walls are constructed using mod cell technology which utilizes prefabricated panels comprising a wooden structural frame filled with straw bales or hemp, and then rendered with breathable lime-based systems or ventilated timber or brick cladding. This technology boasts the lowest carbon footprint and best operational CO squared performance of any construction system currently available. In fact, straw buildings can even have a carbon negative impact since straw absorbs CO squared during its growth as an agricultural co-product. Banks offer short-term financing to companies in the form of overdrafts on current accounts. The advantage of an overdraft lies in its flexibility. 
When a company experiences an increase in cash requirements due to seasonal factors, it can continue issuing checks while the overdraft balance grows. Conversely, when goods and services are sold and cash starts flowing in, the overdraft can be reduced. A prime example of a business operating in this manner is farming. Farmers use overdrafts to finance the purchase of seeds for arable farming or feed for livestock during the winter, covering the period when crops or animals are growing and maturing. The overdraft is then repaid upon the sale of crops or animals. However, a significant disadvantage of an overdraft is its repayable on-demand nature. Scientific ethics revolves around honesty and integrity throughout all stages of scientific practice, encompassing the accurate reporting of results and proper attribution of collaborators. This ethical framework guides scientists from data collection to publication and beyond. Similar to other professions, adherence to scientific ethics becomes an integral part of scientists' work as they recognize that the reliability of their work and the overall body of scientific knowledge depend on upholding these principles. Many ethical principles in science focus on producing unbiased scientific knowledge, which is crucial when others seek to build upon or extend research findings. The scientific ethic promotes open data publication, peer review, replication, and collaboration. Ethics encompasses a set of moral responsibilities that establish what is right and wrong in our actions and choices. Numerous professions have formalized ethical frameworks to guide practitioners in their respective fields. For instance, doctors often take the Hippocratic Oath, which emphasizes the principle of doing no harm to patients. Engineers adhere to an ethical guide that prioritizes the safety, health, and welfare of the public. Within these professions, as well as in the realm of science, these ethical principles become ingrained in practitioners' practices, requiring little conscious effort to uphold. Violations of ethics are considered highly serious and can result in professional consequences, such as license revocation, and in some cases, legal repercussions.
Now crack your PTE sitting at your home. Language Academy brings to you the smartest AI-powered practice portal. Along with the practice questions access free sectional and full mock tests and get instant scorecard with in-depth feedback and analysis. For more hidden secrets, tips, strategies and proven templates click the link below and subscribe to our video course today.